Obsidian has over a thousand plugins now. That's a lot. So out of all of those plugins, what are my top 10? Some of them I'm sure you could guess. Some of them, maybe not. Let's find out. Once again, a big thank you to Into the AM for yet again sponsoring another video. Their t-shirts not only look really good, I'm sure we all feel a little bit like this at work sometimes, but these shirts are also incredibly comfy. I have a lot of sensory sensitivity issues, especially with texture when it comes to clothing, blankets. It needs to be the right kind of soft, not too soft, not too scratchy, but it's, I'm very particular. These t-shirts are incredibly comfortable. All the t-shirts that I've received from them, all of them are comfortable. When I also order them to be a specific size, because I'm a very big guy, I'm six foot six and I'm pretty hefty. So like, I, I need a big t-shirt. 2XL is exactly what I expect 2XL to be. It fits true to size. It's comfortable. I don't get overheated. It's, it's a great t-shirt and they look cool. Look at that. So if you're interested in checking out t-shirts, I highly recommend you do. Even just to browse, check out their awesome selection of graphic tees. You can use my code here, there, there, everywhere, pin comment, description, yada, yada. You can get 10% off of your deal using my coupon code. And they are also doing bundle deals. So check out the bundle deal. There will be some details here or there. Check it out. Give it a look. Find something you like. You won't regret it. So, what are my top 10 plugins? Now, the first two you're probably gonna guess right off the bat, you'll probably get it. But the first two are, of course, Templater and DataView. Templater, just like DataView, has its own custom API. It has its own way of uh, executing arbitrary JavaScript code, inserting template variables. There's a whole syntax and you can really get in the weeds with what you can do with Templater, just like DataView. And with these two plugins, the amount of firepower you can get when it comes to automating, excuse me, automating and processing and getting a good view into your notes and your content, it's just insane. It is absolutely essential to have these two plugins to learn the syntaxes and really leverage these for your vault because it really unlocks a lot of potential. So this particular templater template here of mine actually scrapes YouTube metadata and creates a whole, like all, all of the metadata around my YouTube videos that I will process, puts it into a block so it's already accessible by data view queries and it's just bam, done, just by handing it a YouTube URL. Phenomenal. Then data view comes in with like, look at how little syntax this is. And a lot of this is just the standard keywords and really just a couple different things. And what I get from this whole data view query is a grouped list of all of my obsidian inputs, all of my input notes with all of their uh, different metadata, the, the data finished it, the type it is, and just some additional plugins that I'll talk about later. And it's grouped by year. And that little amount of syntax gives me this awesome overview into the entire timeline of the inputs that I processed in obsidian. That's awesome. And it doesn't even take a lot to get to this. Now, the third plugin you might not guess right off the top of your head. Now, these aren't in any particular order, but it does come after data view because it works with data view. And the plugin I'm talking about is the update time on edit, which gives me the created and updated timestamps here, which are incredibly handy for, again, more data view shenanigans. Now, in data view, you might already know this, but you get the, the baked in variables, file.ctime, file.mtime, which is created and modified. Basically the same things that I'm talking about this plugin giving you. So why do I have these? Because my specific use case literally caused me an issue with this, that these, this plugin is essential for me for. I like to do a lot of things on the command line because I'm very nerdy and sometimes it's just more efficient to do things on the command line and get it done. And what that does sometimes is that when I process a bunch of files in my vault, let's like say I want to remove a piece of text from a thousand files, I can do it in a single line command on the command line. It's done in two seconds. But then the way that a lot of these commands work 
it resets the metadata on the files. It, it says basically, oh, all these files are now created now, not when they were originally created. So the metadata is basically lost. So what update time on edit plugin does for me is it actually hard codes the values of those pieces of metadata that are so crucial. The temporal metadata is usually an incredibly crucial data point to always capture. And this gives it to me inside the note, always accessible, always usable. And that way I don't have to deal with that issue ever again. And because it's the plugin that's oft, uh, always going, if I actually update this note, it will actually update the value in this field automatically. I don't have to do it. That's an awesome plugin and it's incredibly useful for my particular use case. Now the next one, you'll probably guess based on the video that I did about it, link card somewhere up there, the Obsidian Zotero integration plugin. With one single template, all of my content from a Zotero research paper, all the highlights organized with colors, everything iteratively is just plopped right in there. It's the simplest my Zotero workflow has ever been, ever, and it's, it was just, it's just amazing. I, I highly recommend you check out my video on it, and do, do check it out. If you work with research papers, the Obsidian Zotero integration plugin is chef's kiss. It is one of the best. I mean, just look at this beautiful output. I mean, ignore the 300 something lines of metadata there, but all of the highlights from my research paper, just all of that graphics too, everything ordered, organized. The Zotero integration plugin, yeah, that one is a for sure major winner. Now you've likely seen this one before, but the DB folder plugin. I adore this plugin because all of this is running based off of a single data view query. The data view query just plops a bunch of data right into this plugin. And now here it all is. What do we do with it? Well, I can add fields from those files that it picks up from the query. And they're all over there because it's super zoomed in. So y'all can rate it. Um, yeah, we'll just zoom out really quick. But all these pieces of metadata are in each of these files based on the data view query. And I can just change, add more of those, whatever. But then the most important part is that I have all of these filters and they're progressive filters. So here's all the data from data view. And it's basically just all of my inputs, everything. Same as the timeline view, except this is a much easier way for me to say, oh, I wanna see all of the video notes that I haven't processed yet. Here we go. All of those I haven't processed yet because it has the red square status or I haven't finished processing it. And so what the DB folder plugin does is it gives you a granular fine grained search tool through a data view query output, but with just clickable buttons. And it's just like working with just a higher level interface to manage a large swath of content, i.e. in this case, input notes. I, ad I adore this plugin. I really adore this plugin. Now the next one is one I've actually been using fairly recently. I'm not really flexing a lot in it. I'm not really doing too much here. But for keeping myself organized, it's actually really nice. And I really like it because I already write my YouTube video scripts in Obsidian. Well, now with the project plugin, I can actually manage these video script files with templates, with organization, with different fields. I can keep track of a bunch of stuff all within this plugin. Now, I'm not going to show you those video script ideas there because no spoilers. I see you trying to look. But... I highly love this plugin because you can also have several different projects all within the same interface. You just switch to a different project interface and there's all the fields, all the organization. You can switch it to table view, Kanban view, calendar view, all these different things. And it's all fairly simple out of the box and really intuitive to set up. It's awesome. Projects plugin. Now the next one is not quite so visual. It's going to be the commander plugin. Now I don't do a large amount of things with Commander. In fact, I only have, I think, one command that I've really defined and it was for video notes, but I recognize that this plugin is powerful and it can do a lot. And I just have not gotten around to playing with this yet and really figuring things out and making it work for me more. I'm going to, believe me. 
but this plugin is definitely worth checking out and spending some time looking at because you can automate several actions into a single command and then you can even generate an icon for that and put it into somewhere in your Obsidian application on one of the general ribbon, tab bar, status bar, you can put it in different places. And so like my little macro here is this icon and I could put that somewhere, add a delay, add a command, auto run on startup. There's a lot of possibility there. Like let's say if you uh, are starting on a particular day and you wanna have it on startup, automatically create any missing notes, your weekly, your monthly note or something. I'm sure that's possible. It's just an idea I just literally thought of on the spot. Commander, a lot of potential here. I just haven't explored it quite enough, but you might find some really cool use cases for it. And if you have, please let me know them because I might like them. Let me know in the comments if you found any, any cool uses for Commander. Now the next one is daily notes because of course you gotta have a daily note. Now my daily notes run off of a single template and I've shown this before, it's fairly basic. It also shows me the same day in every other year that I've had a note for this particular day. And it shows me any notes created on this particular day for this note. And it's just my daily journal. I just list my thoughts. I list the highlights for the day, like I mentioned in my last video. And it's just a great way of keeping a record of your day. And it works well, obviously, with Templater and Data View because I got Templater stuff for filling out the metadata when I open up a new daily note. Data View automatically pulls in relevant information for me that I might want to see on this daily note. And it's just, you got to have a daily note. It's it's useful just for journaling or just for cataloging your actual journey through knowledge curation and personal knowledge management. And to tie in with the daily note is the calendar plugin. I've been using calendar, I think since it came out and it's obviously still just as useful. I, it helps me keep track of the daily notes I have and haven't made. It helps me make the weekly note. It's just nice to see it here. And this also, I mean, this isn't one, but I'm gonna just tack this on periodic notes, because with periodic notes, I can actually work with my templates for weekly, monthly, and yearly notes and launch those all from here. So I can automatically use periodic notes to jump to any of my template notes for any of these timeframes. And now I also just click on here to run my weekly note, but for the monthly and the annual notes, periodic notes is where it's at. And it's a super small plugin, just has that very small use case it gets the job done. So I'm bundling periodic notes with calendar. So the final and 10th plugin that I recommend is again, another two pack, but it's gonna be supercharged links. So supercharged links, I have some CSS defined in my particular theme, but that's where you can actually put it that works with, so if I go to supercharged links, there is two attributes to target for styling. No type and status, if, you, if your file has these two attributes, it's gonna look for the value of those attributes and apply some styling. So there's some other options here. It looks like I have everything enabled, but basically it's gonna look for type and, and status and determine what type of input note and what status of processing it's in. So this is an article that I have finished reading. And that is how all of these pieces of visual flair are added to these links or my notes um, because these emojis are added via CSS because those pieces of YAML metadata are targeted by supercharged links. And in the same note of just adding flair for the sake of making things more accessible and understandable is the uh, editor note count plugin. Super simple plugin, but it basically just adds numbers counting the notes within folders and ultimately the wrap up or roll up at the top. So you can see I've got almost uh, almost 1,400 notes within my journal folder, which is including annual, monthly, weekly, and daily notes. So you can see I've been doing daily notes for almost three complete years now, um, a while. But this lets you see at a glance all of the totals of notes within folders. And I really like this because Sometimes I like to see when something is in a folder because it shouldn't be, or I need to know how much left I have to go. Like I'm converting a lot of these files in these folders from my fitness notes vault, and I'm putting them into this refactored one until I can finish all of this refactoring and then put it into 
a final resting Zettelkasten uh, root directory, and that's where everything's going to live. Pretty much like my main vault. So until I get that, like... I need to see these folders to see, okay, I got 27 more to process here, 78 there, 106 there, and that helps me keep track of things. And I rather like that. So those are my ten, top 10 plugins that I recommend. Yeah, there were some bundles there, but top 10. But I want to know where are your top 10 and why? I want to know in the comments. Tell me, what are your top 10 plugins and why do you recommend them the most? Especially if they differ from mine. If you have a different one, I want to know why. You will like it so much. All right, I'll catch you all in the next one.